Our first case for today is the child. He is three years old. Reports will work. He came to us in May last year with hyperactivity. crying and it used to be a shrill cry he is very stubborn he shrieks quite a lot you know like a shrill shrieking cry we call that as cry encephalic so it's sometimes very even shrill than this we call this as cry encephalic this is the cry sometimes which are associated with like a cerebral cry and, ah, that kind of very shrill cry right so those were the major areas of concern, restlessness, shrieking, he used to roll his head like this from side to side, roll kottu to. Shouts, when he's angry sometimes throws things, he's he's three years old but speech is quite poor, he just calls about mum and dad and nothing more than that in the mother language. Um, he catches cold quite easily as well, resulting in runny nose and a nose block. Catches cold quite easily, resulting in runny nose and a nose block, followed by nose block, sorry. Sometimes he gets spasm as well. From the cold, yes. Eye contact is very poor. The history of the child, he had attack of pneumonia at age 3 months, which was diagnosed case of pneumonia. He had a whooping cough, which you understand is like a paroxysmal cough at age of 7 months. And he had a typhoid at 1 and a half years age. So, 3 acute illnesses which occurred almost very close to each other. Right. So, pneumonia followed by whooping cough followed by typhoid. And the parents mentioned that post typhoid, the stubbornness, the shrieking increased. It was there to a certain extent, but it had flared up before that. The acute cold had, st the, uh, the recurrent cold had started post the pneumonia. So, he had an attack of pneumonia at 3 months age and the recurrent cold started after that. It was there to a certain extent before the new, uh, typhoid, but it flared up after the typhoid. So, the cerebral symptoms, you know, like the ne yeah. neurological or behavioral changes started more after the typhoid. The MRI shows a subdural hygroma, which is like a fluid collection in the brain. Hygroma, I will pass on the reports. H Y G R O M A, Hygroma. This is the MRI report. There is a hot feeling on the head. He gets frequent bad breath and mouth ulcers. Frequent bad breath and mouth ulcers. I already shared with you about the recurrent cold. He sweats quite a lot on the head. He does not like to play with others, he plays alone. There is a tendency to squint as well, squint is you know the eyeballs, um, the eyeballs can't focus you know, so it is deviation of the eyeballs. I shared with you he can be quite aggressive, he sometimes the expression of anger is either he throws things, either he hits his own head or sometimes even breaks things. 
is a hot child who craves for sweets. You understand as I shared with you for up to age of 12 years, we always ask about A, pregnancy history, B, delivery history, C, milestones, right? I have already discussed with you, it's a cardinal mistake if you don't ask any of these three. Pregnancy history, there was nothing appreciable to discuss. Um, again, delivery history, there was nothing abnormal as well. It was a cesarean section, but here you understand the under, uh, routine cesarean section. I have shared that with you also. Milestones were delayed, delayed walking, delayed talking. You understand he does not speak that much. If you see this case, there is quite a lot of layers to it or quite a lot of factors to this case. A, there is a factor of the recurrent cold, that is one of the issues, which started after a pneumonia or could have flared up after the whooping cough. And there is the factor of the emotional behavioral changes which started after the typhoid or which flared up after the typhoid. You understand what I mean? So when I took up this case, I made sure that there are two factors which I have to address. The recurrent cold which started post the pneumonia or post the pertussis, um, whooping cough or the behavioral changes which flared up after the typhoid, right. And the head is quite large as well, sometimes that could be because of the water retention as well. May 2019, I started the case with Heliborus. Why Heliborus? I want you to open Borike for this medicine, please. I am sorry, if you open Allen's, please, first and then I will share with you the Borike points. Kikore? There is a tendency to leak as well. You see, he is licking the, licking the, yeah, and also the um, wood. If you see in the introduction, Heliborus, second paragraph, Borike, uh, Allen's, sorry. Melancholy, woeful, despairing, silent with anguish after typhoid. Allen's, Heliborus, melancholy, despairing, silent with anguish after typhoid. So, etiology or behavioral changes after typhoid can be helped with Heliborus. You got that everyone? Allen's, right. Now, why Heliborus in this case? In case of Heliborus, if you see in Borike, there is a line of produces a condition of sensorial depression. So, what happens in Heliborus? It could be as a consequence of an acute illness, acute infection like a meningitis, like a typhoid or a consequence of head injury. They had a head injury, A or it could be an acute illness. Resulting, the five senses are affected in heliborus. You understand what I mean? Speech is affected, hearing is affected, vision is affected, taste is affected. So, all the five special senses of heliborus are affected. A as a consequence of a head injury, B as a consequence of an acute illness. Right? So, with him, the vision has been affected, he has squinting. Right? Speech has been affected. You are with me? Now, along with this, if you see the head section in Borike, rolling the head from side to side, boring the head into the pillow. And you have this kind of shrieking cry, cry encephalic we call this. You have that in Heliborus, you have that in Apis, you have that in Zincum, where it is a shrill cry, <coughs> that kind of a shrill cry, you have that with Heliborus. You understand what I mean? Repeat again the points for Heliborus. A history of acute illness, which is a typhoid, which is resulting in sensorial depression. If you see the introduction of Heliborus in Borike, there is a line, sensorial depression, sees, hears, tastes imperfectly. So, the vision deteriorated or the screen appeared post the typhoid as well. So, I interpreted that as a sensorial depression because a particular sense organ is affected, the five special senses, one of those is affected with the rolling of head from side to side, with the etiology from typhoid or the flaring up from typhoid, right. And this shrill cry, shrieking, you have that with Heliborus. I, I did not address the cold at that point of time, right. You know, the, these cases when you have a clear etiology that the cold started from a pneumonia, you can always start the case with pneumococcin. Or you had the etiology that it started after whooping cup, you can start the case with pertussin. Pertussin is the nozode prepared from the whooping cup, pertussis or pertussin and pneumococcin is the nozode prepared from pneumonia. 
So you can always start with these remedies if you have a particular etiology that the certain symptoms started pose this condition. You understand what I mean? But for him, I thought they emphasized as well because of the behavioral component was quite strong. We started with Heliborus. So May 2019, Heliborus 200C was prescribed. He couldn't stand at that point of time. Do hati dakhan. So don't hati dakhan. So my name is. Gradually, in course of time, he has been able to stand, and you see, he is walking a few. With Heliborus, there has been improvement with, as you can see, his locomotor functions. He has been able to walk and stand. Kiki Pori Bortan Recho Shudke, Chachanata Komeche, Shouting has reduced. Stubbornness has reduced, the mom says. Ageje Matha Nijer Matha took to Shetta. He doesn't hit his bang his own head. Areje Eje Eta. The rolling of head is still there. So those have been the positive things with Heliborus. Um, we started with Heliborus 200C in May, June there was not much change, July we saw him again, I went up to 1M because I thought it was more neurological, emotional component is there, 200C perhaps is not working, went up to 1M. September, October we had boosted, November I repeated 1M again. And he has been improving gradually with Heliborus since November, right? I have put a note that when Heliborus it gets standstill, if the cold doesn't improve, thanda laga problem hota ta kome chagat thega. Na abal nahi hai chhodi. Maine okay protein shram karano jaache na. Shram korale thanda lagi jaache. Kashi aur itu niyeshi abar. The tendency to recurrent cold is improved about 10, 15, 15 percent, but it's still quite persistent. I put a note if Heliborus does not improve the cold, we change to pneum uh, pneumococcin. You understand because they mentioned that the cold started after that. So you understand we are taking care of etiology one step at a time. And the, we have the patient's confidence because you know they, they see there is improvement with movement, with eye contact. So we have his confidence. And later on when we have given pneumococcin, maybe later on we will think of a constitutional remedy to take care of the remaining symptoms. So, always when you have a clear cut etiology, this case is helping you to understand. If you have a clear etiology, you can prescribe on the basis of that and then take care of the constitutional symptoms. You have to remove the block first. We are boosting today, last was 1M prescription. Ageru Shutta Ache to? Pounche che? No, no, Pounche. Ota Shudu Nala Ame Kode Di Che Oshud? Ota Khao Ben. Thik Ache? He has a tendency to lick things as well. You know, I shared that with you. You have that in lysine, you have that in mercury as well. Lysine has a tendency to lick things, you know, like the rabbit dog, as well as mercury can have the tendency to lick things. The mom emphasized on that as well. So maybe lysine can come in later on as well, you know, because of the aggressive behavior. Doesn't have those fears, you know, that's why we didn't go for stramonium. No, she's lying. Is Lying on the bed, and it's all—it's all—it's like a sexual, you know, movement as well. That that can be covered um, with Heliborus as well. Heliborus can take care of that. We're not going to any other medicine right now, you know. With, I'll stick with Heliborus at least up to 10 m, and then probably you know do a recase taking and change the plan of treatment. Because, sorry, we are boosting today. Yeah, yeah, three to five days generally. C A S S I A. Cassia sophera, it's an Indian drug, it's not in the uh, borike, not in the borike. Cassia sophera is generally prescribed for a dry cough which is causing the spasms. 
you know, dry cough that is precipitating the spasm. You heard from him that the, he has a cough which is sometimes reeling into a bronchospasm. So for Cassia, they cough and cough and cough and it is dry cough which precipitates the attack. Prescribe it in 6C, you can prescribe in tincture. Cassia.